Okay, welcome everyone back to the Science Applied series. Now, for those of you guys who are new to the series, so far I've covered six separate workouts as part of a push-pull leg split. And those workouts were the basis for my push-pull legs hypertrophy program, which I just recently finished up myself. So this video is gonna mark the beginning of my new training split. So I'm gonna be switching from push-pull legs workouts to upper lower workouts. What's different from anything I've done in the past is that I'm gonna be running the upper lower split six days per week. So I'll be hitting my full upper body three days a week, and then my my entire lower body three days a week, which means the per session volume will be a bit lower, but that bump in frequency is gonna function as a pretty powerful new stimulus for growth. So before we get going with the first leg workout itself, I just wanna quickly let you guys all know that the new upper lower size and strength training program is now available on jeffnipper.com. So you guys can go and download it and start alongside me and many other subscribers who are gonna be running it starting this week. And as usual, it'll be on sale for the week of the launch and then it's gonna go up to full price after that. And I'll have some more details about that at the end. So without further ado, let's dig right in with lower body day number one. So as always, I like to kick off every workout with a general warm up. Now, lately, I've been using the Stairmaster or steep incline treadmill because I find I can break a light sweat very quickly and then get on with the lifting. After that, I'll do my usual three or four minute dynamic stretching and foam rolling routine, which I'll play in fast motion here, uh, but maybe soon I'll dedicate a full video to this routine if it's something you guys would like to see. So from there, we're jumping into the first exercise, which is the back squat, where we're gonna hit three sets of four reps in week one, five reps in week two, and then six reps in week three before returning to four reps in week four. And you guys know I'm a huge fan of the standard barbell back squat, and even though it may not be the best glute builder of all time, they still do a great job of hitting the quads, glutes, and spinal erectors while developing raw strength in a way that's gonna have carryover to other lower body exercises that I don't think really any other exercise can. So for this workout, as always, we're gonna start with the basics, lay down the strength foundation, and then get into the more fancy stuff from there. Uh, so first, a quick recap on all the squat mechanics stuff. Uh, so I'm using a high bar placement here because it allows me to maintain a more upright back posture, which at least for the time being, relieves some pressure off my lower back. However, I'm thinking that maybe about halfway through this program, I'm gonna give the low bar squat a try again and see how it feels because I am about 10% stronger with the low bar position which is pretty standard for most people in my experience. And I'll keep you guys in the loop about how I make that transition from high bar to low bar when it happens. Now, as for depth, I'm aiming to have my hip crease below my knee joint, which basically means that when viewed from the side, you need to get this below this. Uh, however, this is the power lifter in me talking here. So I'd say that if you're training purely for building muscle, I'd say hitting parallel or just below it is probably fine. Also, I like to squat with a slightly wider than shoulder width stance, but as far as stance width goes, this is about as narrow as I'd recommend going. Many people still seem to think that squatting with a narrow stance is gonna hit the quads more. However, research shows that when comparing 75% and 140% of shoulder width stances, there's no difference in quad activation. However, the glutes do seem to be better activated with a wider stance, which makes sense given their role in performing hip abduction. So if glutes are your main priority, you may want to use a slightly wider stance, but granted, I think the best way to determine your stance is to experiment yourself and choose a stance that you feel strong and comfortable hitting depth with. Now, one thing I've been trying to work on here is cueing to breathe down into my gut before I descend rather than breathing up into my chest. And this way, when viewed from the side, the bar shouldn't rise up as you bring in your air and brace. The week one squats are gonna have a fairly low RPE. The weight won't feel too difficult. Week two will be more moderate effort. And then week three is gonna feel pretty hard. Four. Week four feels a bit light again, and then the waving continues. All right, up next, we're doing three sets of 10 reps on an eccentric accentuated Romanian deadlift. I actually ran this workout as a sort of test run like three days ago, so my hamstrings are still pretty sore here, so I'm not using the weight that I'd normally use, but you guys will still get the general idea. So we're doing a four second lowering phase and keeping constant tension on the hamstrings by not squeezing or fully locking out the glutes at the top. I find that the hamstrings respond uniquely well to a strong mind muscle connection. So this is what we're really gonna be trying to accomplish here. And while the research on accentuated eccentrics hasn't shown much of a hypertrophic benefit so far, 
I still think there is merit in using them since slowing down the negative is gonna provide at least the same hypertrophic stimulus with lighter weights. So you'll be able to focus on the hamstrings better than by just getting the weight up and allowing other muscles like the glutes or lower back to take over. Okay, up next, we're doing a walking lunge drop set of three sets of eight and eight for a total of 16 reps on each leg. Now, according to Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, while the jury is still out on drop sets, available evidence does suggest potential benefits when properly integrated into a training program. And in the paper, they advise against large drops of 60 to 70% or very small drops of five to 10% but still acknowledge that various drops in load can be employed. So here we're doing a single 50% drop set. So before you begin, map out how long 16 total strides is for you and place your heavy working weight at one end and your 50% lighter weight at the other. So we're gonna do eight reps each leg with the heavy weight first, drop those dumbbells, pick up the 50% lighter dumbbells, and then go back the other way for another eight reps each leg. Now, if you're new to lunges, this might be a bit advanced for you. So you may wanna start by just dropping the heavy dumbbells and then doing body weight only reps as your drop set, which is also totally fine while you acclimate to the more intense training style. And this isn't something that I'll do all the time, but I really wanted to start this program off with some interesting training tools to keep the workouts challenging and engaging. Uh, but I also think that these tools can be used for bringing up weak points by really pushing yourself. Okay, up next, we're doing another eccentric overloading technique on the leg extension for three sets of 10 reps. Basically, you're gonna do a concentric rep bilaterally using both legs as normal. And then on the way down, you're gonna take one leg off the pad and lower the weight back down using one leg only. So you'll do the eccentric unilaterally while focusing on squeezing the quads and controlling that lowering phase. And there are a few ways that you can do this. If you have one quad noticeably smaller or weaker than the other, then you can do all 10 unilateral eccentrics with the weaker leg first, and then match it with the stronger leg. Now, personally, my quads are close to the same size, so I'm alternating legs on each rep myself. And I think this is a great strategy for overloading the eccentric because research shows that eccentric strength is about 20 to 50% greater than concentric strength. So you can take advantage of this by having one leg handle all of the load on the eccentric and then split the load between the two legs on the positive. After that, we're doing another intensity technique on the lying leg curl, where we're gonna switch between a slow eccentric lying leg curl and a constant tension leg curl for two sets of eight and 12 reps. So basically you'll do eight reps with a three second lowering phase. And then without dropping the weight, do another 12 reps, keeping constant tension on the hamstrings in the active mid range. So we can think of this as a sort of finisher exercise for the hamstrings where we're really trying to burn them out using just two sets. So you've really got to make them both count. And to finish out the workout, we're going to be doing a super set of straight leg calf raises and cable crunches. In this new program, I'm going to be hitting abs two days a week on two of the lower body days. I was originally going to do the abs every day challenge, but I think that for now, a two times per week frequency is going to work better in this program where there's already a pretty high frequency for many other body parts. So that'll probably come later and I'll keep you guys posted on that. Uh, but for now here, we're super setting just for the sake of time and the fact that abs and calves aren't gonna interfere with one another. So for the calf raises, I'm doing these on the leg press because I have a feeling that after this workout, you guys are probably gonna feel like you wanna sit down and do them this way. And it doesn't really matter whether you load these standing or seated, the biomechanics are gonna be pretty much the same as long as you have a straight leg. And then for the cable crunch, this is a movement I'm gonna cover in a future Technique Tuesday video. Uh, but for now, you really just wanna focus on extending and flexing your spine and not just hinging at the hips. So allow your lower back to round at the bottom as you squeeze your abs together as if they were an accordion and you were pushing together. Okay, so guys, that is a wrap for this first leg workout. And like I said, the new upper lower size and strength program is officially live on jeffnipper.com. And it'll probably be a while before I get through all of the sample upper lower workouts here on the channel. So if you guys wanna get started at the same time as me on the program and run it for the next nine weeks, then I'll have that as the first link in the description box below. And this program uses three separate three week wave loading cycles. So it's definitely different than anything you've run previously from me where you have shorter progression cycles where effort builds across three weeks 
and then tapers back down and then up again for three cycles of that for nine weeks total. And even after the first nine weeks, unless you're super advanced, so if you have like 10 or 15 years of training experience, I think you should be able to run it through again for another nine weeks and continue making progress. And as I said, this program is gonna have you in the gym six days per week, but if you can only spend five days a week in the gym, uh, there's an explanation in there of how you can modify the split to fit your schedule. If you can only train four days a week, I'd recommend running my upper lower split in the Fundamentals Hypertrophy program first. And many people who ran my push-pull legs program told me I sort of undersold just how much information is in that program and the fact that it comes with full customer support. So if you guys run into any issues at any point in time, or if you have any questions, my team is there to help you out. And if they can't help you out, then they're gonna put you in touch with me. So anyway, it's gonna be $29.99 for the launch, and then it'll go up to the regular price. So it'll be $39.99 after that. So I'm gonna put a button to the new program over here next to my head if you guys would like to pick it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future science applied videos. And I'll see you guys all here in the next one.